I'm coming hard with questions, but nobody giving me an answer. I ain't no backup dancer. I'm the man, sir. Address me, Pesci, Casino, Nestle. It's all right. Let me tell you, it's all right. It was all fight. Now it's all right. Future, no shoot you, shoot you. If you want to come prove you with the other slugs, say otherwise. I ain't never seen you guys. You act surprised. I know why you don't. I took nine, you don't. Get high, you choke. Don't lie, you broke. See the correlation? Now see the situation you facing, you could accept me, sneeze and bless me, but don't bet me, can only win, I can hardly say with ten men around me, wanna kill a win for what's on your chin, listen, no moist lids, no choice, kid, gotta suit up, no hush shit, this real life, take it or leave it, you fake me, bleed, I'm cheating, right, you appreciate you, hate and breathe, and escape, escape, and demon, drink, six, right to my interior, mind, self, superior, respect, grime, inferior, don't ask, delivery, black, dad, you come tags, all I really wanna do is talk to Ted, enough said. That was a mimic. Written lyric I pretended was a freestyle in the same parking lot where I was robbed by two guys in 2005. On my knees, gun in my mouth, in my underwear. Ten years later, I signed a record deal. I'm on a new personal and professional high. I uh, took a company from zero to 100, hit the Inc. 500 list, number 13 fastest growing in New York, number 24 in global marketing and advertising. Um, I signed an awesome uh, contract with Universal Music Group. I worked with amazing clients like Katy Perry and Samsung. I produced 10 live two-hour broadcasts for CBS. And I was creating amazing content with some of my favorite people on the planet. Personally, I was traveling the world. I moved into a new two-bed, two-bath, balcony, fireplace, pool, tennis court, all that. But what I learned is that no matter the accomplishment and no matter how many creature comforts you surround yourself with, it doesn't guarantee a peaceful mind. See, I was stuck with these thoughts. And I was always complaining and comparing and criticizing. And I was never satisfied. I was never impressed. And you know, it's not the first time we heard this, right? I mean, Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey famously said uh, he wishes everybody could be rich and famous and, and live their wildest dreams so that they could see it's not the answer. And Miss Sonia wrote two great books. One's called The How of Happiness, and one's called The Myth of Happiness. In both, she attributes only 10% of our happiness to life circumstances like marital status, education, wealth, things we typically chase. So for me, this was new. And I was looking for an opportunity to find a way to kind of combat this. So what I did was, what I did almost every morning, I sit in front of my computer in my underwear again, but this time I'm looking for solutions. And I made a list of the top 20 things that I thought might make me feel better. Some of them are a little bit ridiculous, but I'll share with you three of them today. So first, we don't feel good, right? So we go see our doctor. And I had a pretty good relationship with my doctor. And, um, but you know, despite my autoimmune disease and despite my uh, thick cell wall around my heart and my herniated disc and that my retinas are attached by silicone bubbles, I was in pretty good physical shape. So the doctor uh, recommended that I see a behavioral health clinic. Uh, so they studied my brain and uh, besides 140 IQ, they found that I was diagnosed with bipolar 2, uh, PTSD, general anxiety disorder, and other things classified under the term depression. And I was excited. And the doctor looked at me like I was nuts. Why, why are you happy about this? But to me, this was, this was exciting. This was now, OK, there's medical terminology for what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing, the things that are going on in my head. This is now, now a real thing. Like Maybe now we're on the path to treatment. Let the healing begin, right? Well, not so fast. They prescribed me with all kinds of different medications. Some made me really fat, bloated, sweaty, and others made me angry and gave me nightmares, and most all the medication made me really lethargic. And, um, you know, I just, this wasn't the solution that I was looking for. So uh, I continued back in my underwear again, on the computer looking, talking to friends and family and trying to find solutions. And um, one of my friends who I used to write songs with recommended that I speak to a natural channeler from Israel. And uh, at this time, you know, I had tried Eastern philosophies and, and rituals, and I tried Western medication. And at this point, I was ready to, to try anything. So I said, sure, why not? And boy, am I glad that I did that. Because this was my first inclination of hope. This was my first introduction to the journey of the soul. And this idea that we're all just this kind of speck of stardust riding in this meat-covered skeleton floating on a rock through space, this was foreign to me. But nevertheless, it resonated. And I wanted to explore this idea. I wanted to see it from every angle. I wanted to submerge myself into it. I wanted for this idea what every human being has wanted for every idea since the beginning of time. I wanted this idea to manifest into reality. I wanted it to play an active role in my life. You know, I read somewhere that the definition of resilience is our ability to adapt, absorb, and anticipate shocks and stresses. Well, life's shocks and stresses certainly wore me down. I didn't want to make music, I didn't want to tour. I didn't consider myself worthy of the satisfaction of applause. 
Most days I didn't want to get out of bed. And so I looked for another reason. I thought maybe, maybe this definition of resilience is incorrect. And when I visited President Moon in South Korea and when I moved last summer to San Juan and missed the protest, this idea was reinforced that maybe resilience is not about anticipating the negative things bound to happen in our lives. Maybe it's more about just the knowing and the understanding that we have inside of us everything that we need, that we're connected to this infinite source of knowledge and wisdom. And, and I'm not talking about your Wi-Fi connection to Google. <laughs> See, we have 70,000 thoughts per day, about 50 thoughts per minute. You'll have 700 thoughts just during my talk alone. My thoughts were out of control, and I felt like a victim of them instead of a co-creator. And so this was essentially my, my issue, is that you know, how do we become aware of all these thoughts that are bouncing back and forth? How many of them are we really aware of? And what are the thoughts doing to us that we're not aware of? How do we manage this process? And so I discovered a tool that I want to share with you today. It's a tool that it's called the scale of thought. And I picked this up along my travels. And so the ocean of knowledge reads that we're this tiny point of light in the center of the forehead behind the eyes, and that our purpose here on Earth is to experience and express the innate qualities of the soul. That's peace, power, purity, love, bliss, happiness, knowledge, wisdom. And now, during our time here, in this world of the five senses, we encounter these five vices. And the vices have a tendency to kind of dim our light, and block our shine. And the five vices can be represented by the acronym ALGAE, anger, lust, greed, attachment, and ego. Now, we have eight spiritual powers to combat these five vices, but I'll get into that in another talk. So what I learned is that I never had an issue managing things out here. I, I practiced all my life. I studied in school, I, at work, I practiced managing people and situations and circumstances, no problem. My issue was managing here. See, I didn't have the tools to manage my thoughts until now. So I'd like to introduce you to the scale of thought. It's really simple. Picture this, this ascending diagonal line, okay? You have thoughts in essentially five categories. Negative thoughts are down here. The negative thoughts are rooted in those vices, anger, lust, greed, attachment, ego. Then we have wasteful thoughts. And honestly, during this time in my life, most of my thoughts were wasteful. Wasteful thoughts would be the should have, would have, could have, complaining, comparing, criticizing, things that we necessarily don't have control over, things that don't help us to think about and certainly don't help someone else if we share our thoughts with them. Then we've got our neutral thoughts, um, generally observations about the world around us, things that we perceive through our senses. It's, it's 10 o'clock, your shirt is blue, uh, did I leave the oven on? These are typical neutral thoughts. Then we've got positive thoughts and divine thoughts, which is where we want most of our thoughts to be. So let's walk through a couple of examples. Let's say I'm, um, I'm walking down the street and it's a busy street and I see a watch in the middle of the street. A negative thought might be, um, well, the next car that buzzes by, I hope that watch, watch gets smashed to bits and pieces, right? That would be a negative thought. Um, scaling up, up the scale of thought would be a, a neutral thought. It might be uh, the watch is shiny, silver, whatever I, I observe about that. Uh, a positive thought might be, man, that's a beautiful watch. A divine thought might be, I'd like to give that watch to someone less fortunate. Let's walk through a, maybe a better example. Um, let's say that we're walking down the same street, um, eating a sandwich, and in the middle of the street, there's this massive dog just foaming at the mouth, no collar. Maybe most of us in, in that situation might have a negative thought. That's, hey, I hope somebody locks this dog up in a, in a kennel. Um, escalating that up the scale of thought uh, to a wasteful thought might be, hey, I should have crossed the street a block ago. I wouldn't have to deal with this. Uh, a positive thought might be, I hope someone gives this dog a good home, as I kind of tiptoe around. And a divine thought might be, hey, let me give this, this dog my sandwich. Mm -hmm. So you kind of get the feel. The, the goal for the scale of thought is first to be aware of the thoughts that are happening. Second, to pin them down along this scale, understanding what kind of thought it is. And then third, to rephrase the thought, to escalate it up the scale. And what I learned is that, see, the brain learns on repetition and rehearsal, right? So the more that we do this, the more that our brain will start to produce positive thoughts on its own. And when that happens, you start to recognize the positivity that you're surrounded with. And my goal for sharing this with you guys today is not necessarily just to help you to kind of get through the day, but, and not just to, to create more positive thoughts in the community, but really so that we can live more meaningful and happier existences, no matter how much of your life you spend in your underwear. Thank you. Thank you.